Hello everyone, welcome to our second episode of this Boss Tales webinar. In fact, the first episode that we did with Mr. Abbas Kapadia, we got great review, great feedback from a lot of people from across the world. Oh, he's an amazing photographer. Yeah. And people people are asking to do this on a regular basis. Let's do so, that. Yeah. We, we were planning to do it like twice or thrice in a month, but I think we have to do it. We have to make it regular. Yep. So let's start it. Yeah, people are already watching. So again, welcome back everyone. Let me give a brief introduction about Postales. Postales is a collective collaboration of a group of dedicated nature lovers to bring humans closer to nature through the medium of photography and art. We have started this organization six years ago. So far, we have done 30 online magazines, one international wildlife festival, 60 plus international photography workshops and lectures around the world. We also did 23 wildlife photography exhibitions. Most of them are done in Dubai. And collectively, we have 1.5 million plus social media followers. We have planted 40,000 plus saplings across the world. And we have around 200 plus international contribut contributors who support us with their photographs, their article, conservation-based article, species-based article. And a lot of people are giving us videos as well. We also published two coffee table books. The first one was uh, the Big Cat Trails, which had almost 100 pictures of the big cats from across the world. And the second one was concentrating more on the Arabian side, and it's called the Arabian Trails. This is our so far journey. And this new progr program, which we called as Post Tales, is actually a storytelling, which is our new initiative to spread awareness and education. That's all about posters and our initiatives. So now I would like Nisha <laughs> to go ahead with the today's program, which is Rim Light in Wildlife Photography. We are all excited to see your photographs and your experience and some tips and tricks about how to capture rim light in the wild. Thank you Thank so much. You. <laughs> all right. So thank you once again. Thank you all once again for the, all the registrations and for taking time to, you know, listening to this ses session. In fact, I started to see early morning sunrises only when I got more involved in wildlife photography. Till that time, I was more into a, I was more of an owl spending most of my time working till late in the early till late early mornings and then sleep till midday that that's how i was but photography changed me as a person my views it changed my patience my ethics the way i see things i started to give notification or i started to give attention or to the details and I started to check my surroundings. I think photography for sure made me a better person. And if I'm going to talk on that particular topic, you know, we will run out of time for the topic which I'm supposed to talk here. 
So let's start with some basics. I'm not just talking about the rim light part over here. Some basics, which I always follow. And I'm sure most of us will be doing the same. The first and the most important thing is understanding the basics. In a camera, even with your closed eyes, you should be able to change your aperture, your ISO, and uh, shutter speed without and exposure without taking the camera from your eyes or with even with closed eyes you should be able to change it specifically for wildlife mainly because in wildlife you just need to wait for the right moment you don't have an opportunity to ask for a repeat so doing this or understanding it the basics of your gear is extremely extremely important now, the second point is understanding the behavior of a species. That's again important because this will help you to be prepared to make the prediction and for the possibilities in the frames. Understanding a habitat will also help you in making great frames. So the more practice and practice and practice is the key. Now, the most important element is ethics. We humans have done enough and more damages in this planet Earth. So just for your photography, please never ever try to disturb a habitat or any species. All you need is to be patient. If you are patient, I'm 100% sure you will get mesmerizing moments in your journey. So it's about patience, practice, and ethics. Now, let's get started with our work see my most of the images which i'm going to share here is going to be focusing or framing frames from africa specifically from the masai mara it's like a second home for me because i kind of visit this particular place every every year at least three to five times so it's quite natural all the images are from there the basics of rim light is the best time is when the sun is low in the sky. So specifically, early mornings and late evenings are the best time to make this beautiful shots. In the Mara, we start our journey quite early in the morning. So the whole idea is sporting a species right in front of the rising sun so that we get the sun or the source of light right behind the subject. That is the key. And you need to make sure you're getting a darker background as well. So let me start with sharing my screen so that you can see the images and understand what I'm trying to talk about. So when you selecting a subject, it's very important few things. As I mentioned, the first thing is the light. The source of light should be right behind the subject. At the same time, the background should be dark. For rim light, that is the most important things. Animals with translucent edges, or birds with long feathers work the best. As an example, lion, bears, mon mongoose, baboons, cheetah, leopard, any of these animals work beautifully in this kind of situation. And a darker background so that we can see the outline, we can concentrate on the outline. So this is my slide number one. These are two cheetahs on top of a mount. If you are familiar with Masai Mara, Kenya, you must have heard about Malaika. She is very famous cheetah. These two boys are her offsprings. This was on the bank of Mara River, our first sighting on that particular day. Few things I follow in rim light. 
underexpose the max 3 point plus i mean three stops plus i in this particular shot it's five point five steps kelvin value i often use 6000 plus to get a warmer tint when the light is low focusing can be a task so try to focus on the glowing edges you can also try spot metering in my case i often use either evaluative metering mode or manual mode iso is completely depending on the available light and the subject and its mood if you are of if you are foreseeing some action then keep the iso slightly high to obtain the shutter speed you require here i was looking for a moment where i could see all four ears the two cheetahs and the four ears facing in the right direction and then as i mentioned i end under exposed five stops at times when you check the review in the camera you may see it very dark but when you check the same in your computer screen it's often get lighter so don't get deceived by your camera's review it's always better to underexpose slightly on the negative side please keep a note of this this is important keep your eyes glued into the viewfinder a tiny move the subject makes can create a memorable frame the settings here and the equipments i have used i used the nikon d5 along with the 400 mm 2.8 aperture was 8 shutter speed was 400 iso was 500 kelvin 8330 now to the second one when you spot a cheetah on the mount and if it is active you know it's going to get up and walk down here is when you understand the behavior it can help predicting the next move when it comes to cat often after three to five yawning they gets up then sometime they stretch their back and then walk i was waiting for this move and i was ready with my settings the change what you can see in the setting over here if in the previous frame it was shutter speed was 1 bar 400 here it is 1 bar 1250 i was kind of prepared in case if the cheetah decided to run so let's get to the next one the lion king you can see the light is slightly better here so the day was a brighter one the lion was walking the equipment i used again nikon d5 along with 400 mm 2.8 the subject was walking in these kind of situations you always need to keep on the speed of the subject and the moves of the subject so a lion walking in a regular speed thousand is actually more than enough i read i have reduced the iso to 200 so that i could avoid noise level the file usually don't have noise even if it is like 6000 but to be on the safer side it's always better to play in a better way and it was brighter that was the reason i have reduced the kelvin value too now this was another day with a lioness with a pride in fact there were three cubs in a nearby bush and when you spot any species with young ones together there is of, they are often very active in the in the early mornings and late in the evenings so always keep an eye on the shutter speed. The sky was very orangish that day. I wanted to make it more dramatic. So I pumped up the Kelvin value to 8330. And I used an F9 here. Because by any chance, if the cups gets into the frame, I didn't want them to be completely out of focus. 
equipments used again d5 along with a 600 mm f4 and the setting because i was kind of expecting some kind of action so i kept it on slightly higher and it's 1600 I guess it was 400 Kelvin, as I mentioned, to make it more warmer, I make, I put it into 8,330. Now, once again, Lion King. It was very early in the morning. Visibility was pretty bad. These are the situations where your camera and its ISO performance helps a lot. When you're using high-end cameras, the noise level will be comparatively low. This was a funny trip to in a way. In usual cases, porting a lion is very easy compared to a leopard. In this six days time, it was a six days trip. I have sported 17 different leopards, but till the last day, no lions. I mean, I have sported many lionesses, and many cubs in Sabadell, but a full grown male was no sighting till the last day. But on the last day, just for a couple of minutes, a minute or two, we spotted this young, handsome male, and he just walked across right in front of the sunrise and vanished into the bush. Equipment used D5 and 400 mm. So, here, I made the aperture wider so that I can get more light. And ISO was 800 Kelvin to get that reddish tint was 8,330. Another day started with the Lion King. He was more comfortable and very cool. Gave us good time before he walked into the bush. As sun goes up, the lions get into the shade and they just sleep they can sleep up to 18 hours in a stretch. So in this little time window, we get in the mornings and in the evenings, we need to make sure we are using it maximum without making any trouble. My settings here, Nikon D5, 600 mm f4, 6.3, one bar thousand because he was moving. So I wanted the shutter speed to be a bit on the higher side. ISO was 6,600 and Kelvin was 7,140. Lion King again. As you can see, it was a brighter morning. When the golden rays touch the brown grass blades, it illuminates the whole habitat. It looks like someone shower glittering gold dust across the terrain. Any species in that terrain, in that light, may try to make maximum out of it. Settings and equipment details. Here I was using a D5 with 180, 400 mm. Set and F4, 1 bar 400, because the light was good, I made the ISO to 100 and the line was slow, so that one bar 400 was enough to capture the move. Now this one, his name is Scarface. You can say this is one of the celebrity lions of Masai Mara. He got this car and lost his eyelid in 2012 in a territory fight. He got a narrow escape. Later, the doctors from the nearby conservancy supported his supported and helped him to survive. He's okay now. Even during this sighting, he was badly injured and was limping. And throughout that period, his pride was supporting with his food. From the look itself, you can see he was not that healthy. He was moving towards the pride. The lioness pulled a wild beast carcass from the water body. Though Scarface was looking very thin and unhealthy, the moment he reached near the carcass, with his one roar, the lion, the lionesses, the subadults, and the cubs just moved away from the scene. He spent almost an hour in eating, and he didn't let anyone get near to the food. 
I felt sorry for the cubs and the lioness. But that is the way life goes in the wild. Here is what I love in, in this particular frame. His mane with the light. It was like a heart made with golden threads. And the equipment I have used here is a Nikon D5 with a 600mm f4. And the aperture was f4, 1 bar 1000 shutter speed, ISO was 800, Kelvin was 7690. This one is a continuation of the same sequence. Here, I have changed only the exposure. I didn't under expose it that much. So you can see more light into the frame compared to the previous one. So the equipment as well as uh, the settings, it's more or less same except the exposure. So this is a continuation of this one. So this was the lioness, which I was referring to, who pulled out the carcass from the water. Once Scarface finished 70% of the carcass, he let the cubs join him in the, in the feast. But the poor lioness, she still had to wait again. When she got a chance, she just dig in. For a fraction of a second, I saw a bubble on her face. The light made it look like a magic ball. It was there only for a few seconds. This is the plus point when you keep your attention on the subject and fingers on your trigger to capture the best moment. Equipment, B5 and 600 mm. And the settings F4, 1 bar 1000, ISO was 800, and Kelvin was 6250. We reduce the Kelvin value as the sun goes up and the day get brighter. So this one, slide number 12, it's a typical beautiful Mara morning with the floating balloon safaris in the sky and the rising sun in the horizon and the Lion King right in front of the sunrise. What more can you ask for? Don't you think it is beautiful? So the equipments use this D5 along with 400mm 2.8 settings, F4, 1 bar 3200, ISO was 400, 500, sorry, Kelvin was 8330. I really wish if there was some more clouds in the sky, but you know, these are dreams. Now, it's a continuation. You can see he was dragging a carcass of a wild beast. Lion with the kill, with the rising sun in the background, along with the floating balloons in the sky. In the wild, every moment is special, but some days are magical. Equipments used, D5, 400mm 2.8, F4, 1 bar 3200, ISO 500, and Kelvin, 8330. Now, whenever you see a subject, try to photograph it. Try to photograph portraits, go landscape, tight and uh, wide, I mean. Then underexpose, overexpose, neutral, play with the color values, play with the Kelvin values. So this way, the same subject, you will be able to make different frames and play with your aperture. The depth of field can make magical difference in a frame. This one was a showstopper in that particular day. He walked through the grass for a long distance and stopped nearby a water body and he drank water for almost three, four minutes before he got into the shade. So the equipments I have used here was uh, a, oh, sorry, it's, uh, it's not a Canon, it's a Nikon D5 with 400mm 2.8 and the setting F8, 1 bar 2000 and 
1,250 was the ISO, Kelvin was 7,140. So let's give a break for the cats. I kind of feel when I see this particular scene in front of me, Apple logo is what got into my head. It's a Thompson Gessel in the frame. These cute ones are the favorite food for cheetah, but for cheetahs, this is never an easy target. They are very fast runners. They can reach up to 40 miles an hour. Here, what I would like to explain is the importance of the dark background and positioning yourself. You can see the rim light in the neck area and in the bottom part. But when it comes to the top, where the sky is the background, you are not able to make it that clear. I mean, the rim light is not that visible. So always keep your attention to the background. You need a darker background to get that golden thread. So the equipments used here, D5 with 600 mm F4, F8, 1 bar 3200 ISO because it was bright. So I made it 100 and Kelvin was 8330 to make it more dramatic. Common Eland is the second largest antelope in the world, being slightly smaller than the giant Eland. They are often very shy animal. Though the scene looked beautiful, the Elan looked like she is dancing. The actual behind the story is completely different. A baby Elan was hunted down just few seconds ago by the famous five cheetah coalition of Masai Mara. This mother was trying to give a last minute fight, but she couldn't save her young one. Equipment used Nikon D5 with 180-400 mm f4. Settings f8, 1 bar 2000. ISO 1000 and Kelvin was 7140. This was the behind the scene situation. This is not a rim light. You can see the difference when the subject is, the sun is right behind the subject and when the sun is facing the, sub, the subject is facing the sun. This was the baby Elant with the adult one. And the mother was just trying to scare the cheetahs away, but somehow didn't work. That is life in the wild. An ostrich memory from a beautiful evening. He was happily walking around, bold and fearless. Equipment used. There's a D5 along with a 600 mm F4. Settings F8, 1 bar 320 because he was not in a hurry. ISO 160 Kelvin, the light was still on the brighter side. So I have used 6,250. Another beautiful memory of a ostrich with the sun in the back. Remember always, the source of the subject, the source of the light should be right behind the subject. And the equipment used is D5, 600 mm, F4, 1 bar 2000, and ISO 200. Wanted it to be more redder or warmer, so kept the Kelvin 8330. A cheetah subadult in the grass. It was a very windy day. The light was strong too. There were two more subadults in the scene. They were playing, they were playing kind of hide and seek. This one was hiding in the savanna. I love the way the light was reflecting on the grass and on the edges of the cheetah. Equipment used, Nikon D5 along with 180-400 mm. And the plus point of 180-400 mm is the inbuilt converter. So with, with that, with one switch, you get 560 mm reach. So I was using this with the converter. The settings is 
F10, 1 bar 2500, ISO 400, Kelvin 7140. As I mentioned, there were two more subbarrels and they were in a playful mode. So I wanted to capture any moves, any attempt to run around or a hug or a jump. That was the reason I kept the IS shutter speed on the higher side. And the, um, and the aperture too. So in case if there is more than one subject in the frame, the other one doesn't look. It depends on the depth, but still it looks slightly on the focus. And you can see one right behind two, a slight shadow. Now, this is from one of my favorite series. This is from 2019 September. They named this cheetah as Amani. She is very good in hunting, but somehow she lost her all her cubs from last three seasons. When I reached Mara, our team in the Mara mentioned about her and her little cub. They were they're very intelligent animals. They hide the cubs in the grass when they go for hunting. They come out in from the the cubs come out from the cub from the hide only in the presence of mother early morning cheetah am in the grass is an awesome subject to experiment equipment used nikon d5 with 400 mm 2.8 2.8 and um, 1 bar 5000 is the shutter speed iso was 640 kelvin was 6, 000, 7690 i kept the shutter speed on the higher side mainly because of the subadult, I mean the cub in this scene, they are they are full of energy. They kind of jump around all the time. So I didn't want to lose any any of the moment of interaction, and I wanted the background to be slightly on the smoother, creamy way. This is one of my favorite moment. You can say it's a continuation shot. When you are with the cub and mother, all you need to do is be patient. Be quiet. Be patient. Don't move your attention from the subject. Give them time to accept you, your presence. Then they can come very close, closer than your lens minimum focal length. In cases like that, all you need to do is just enjoy the visual treat. Here, technically, I have underexposed five stops and kept the Kelvin high. And I have reduced the ISO in order to cut down the noise and the light. So the settings, F4, 1 bar 6,400, ISO was 100, and Kelvin was 8,330. Now, continuation of the series. This is a result of being patient. After a while, the mother walked next to her vehicle and lie down there. The cub was extremely naughty and curious. There were many occasions I was just watching her or watching them rather than any photography. Equipment used is Nikon C7 with 400mm 2.8. Settings F4, 1 bar 1600, ISO 200 and Kelvin 8330. There is a behind the story for this particular series. In fact, this particular trip, I was supposed to test Nikon D6. But when it was the time for the trip, instead of C6, what I got was C7. Honestly, I was pissed off. A couple of friends mentioned that C6 is great, but not that positive review on C7. Anyway, I took it as my second camera. For the initial two days, I didn't even touch it. But on the third day, when they were sitting next to a lazy lion, I thought of trying it. From that day till this time, till the trip's end, and even now, I'm a big fan of C7. We Nikon still need to work on the battery life and couple more points, but 
the results are amazing. Continuation of the series. When you are with cubs, just focus on them. They play with the mother, run around the mother. They love to play with the mother's tail. And if there are siblings, they love to play with the tails. The tails are very important. They bite, they beat, and it's fun. Follow the cubs, then you will get mess mesmerizing moments. Here, the cub was sitting on top of the head of the mother and watching us. All this happens in a fraction of a second. If your attention varies from the subject, you will lose many moments. Equipments and settings. C7 with a 400mm 2.8. F4, 1 bar 1250. ISO was 200. Here, I really pumped up the Kelvin to see how it looks. And you can see it's really towards the redder side. Continuing. So I reduced in this particular one. It's a continuation of the series. Cups are like humans only. They love to play with the mother. For me, in my imagination or for my concept, he is just trying to play hide and seek, or maybe this was a just this was just a moment he was posing for me. I don't know. Equipment used is Nikon C7 with 400 mm 2.8 F4, 1250 ISO was uh, 200 and Kelvin from 9990. I changed it back to 8330. Continuation, these are memories very precious and evergreen for me. It's like a reminder for me. Just need to be silent, be conscious, keep unvaried attention on the subject. The mother nature will bless you with handful of blissful moments and memories. Equipment used. Nikon C7 with 400mm 2.8, F4, 1 bar 1250, ISO, 100, ISO 200, and Kelvin 8330. By then, you know, I kind of like the warmer tone in my images. Some people like it cooler, I like it warmer. This is a short from an old collection. These two cubs were playing in the grass. Mother was under the shadow in a nearby bush. Light was a bit on the harsher side. Grass were dry and brown. And you can see how creative nature is. The design, their design among the grass is the perfect example for camouflage. As I mentioned, this is from my Canon days. I was using Canon 1DX Mark I with a 600mm f4. F8 was the aperture 1 by 1250 was the shutter speed. ISO was 400 and Kelvin was 5800. The major difference I see between Canon and Nikon is the colors. Now, let me close the session with the elusive leopard in the rim light. She is known as Saba, the bold and beautiful lady. She was on a hunting mode as we even saw two failed attempts to. I got only a couple of opportunities to photograph a leopard in rim light. In fact, only three times, I believe, so far. That evening, she gave us some fabulous moments. So equipment I used here, oh, it's again, it's not a Canon, it's a Nikon D5 along with a 400mm 2.8. And 4.5 was the aperture. Because she was in a hunting mode, I wanted to keep the shutter speed on the higher side. So it's 2500. And ISO was 250, Kelvin is 7140. So that is that's the set of slides which i wanted to share
So let's get back. Um, so the key points over here. The best time is early mornings and late evening when the sun is in the horizon, low in the sky. And the Kelvin always try to play with the Kelvin. And uh, to give the warmer tint, try to play, try to be on the higher side of the Kelvin side. Kelvin is like a U. You know, early mornings and uh, late evenings, you can keep it high and the midday, you can keep it low. Under it, keep your attention to the background. So that was the whole talk. Hermi, is there any question? Let's open yes, it for yes, question yes, and yes. Brilliant, brilliant photographs. And I, it's like to go to Mara again. Oh, I, I think it's almost, it's almost more than, I think, eight months that I haven't been there. I know. So, it's yeah. This image just literally took us back to Mara. Thank you, Guru. Yes. <laughs> just <laughs> love it. We, we have a couple of questions. The first question is uh, by Shabri Nath. Major challenges is rim light photography. Sporting is the most important part. See, if if you have a trip with six days or five days, even if it is two days, sometimes you may be lucky enough to sport something in the right position, the sun being right behind the subject. But there are occasions where you don't get to see even one particular such kind of shot in a six days trip. So sporting is extremely important. So the guide which you are using in wherever you are going, that's very important. The person should be able to understand what is the place to look for which animal and um, the timing and then look you, you really need to keep your eyes open and keep looking around driving around that's the most important thing the rest of the things it's you need to understand you need to understand the basics it's, it's all about photography it's all about basics and your imagination once you know the basics then the rest of the things you just it's like magic. I hope. Mm -hmm. I, what do you think, Hermi? You can also answer the same question if you have a different point. Yeah, I think uh, I agree. With you. The positioning of our vehicle is important, especially playing with light. When we are playing with light, that to against the light shooting. Yeah. yeah. The exact placement matters. Yes. Either you should have an experienced guide with you driver or yeah a mentor that, yeah that can help you get better pictures and then it's it's up to your settings as you said yes. we have one more question from chandrasekhar sardesai okay uh, how are some of the ground how are some of these ground level shots possible are people allowed to get off the vehicle in mara no, people are absolutely, especially with uh, lions and all, there is no way you can get down from the vehicle. So the way what we do is there are two approach. One, we try to position ourselves in a way it looks like the subject is slightly on the higher side. The second way is modified vehicle. We remove the door from the vehicle and remove seats in from the vehicle. So we keep a mattress in the, inside the vehicle and with the open door, we can lie down inside the vehicle. You really need, if you are a tall person, you really need to skew down to fit in, you know, you need to be in different position to fit inside that small area. In that case, you can get, keep the, not, you can keep the camera not on the window. We can keep it slightly on uh, towards um, the door, where the door starts. That is the way we are at getting the ground level shots um it need a bit flexibility for your body sometimes it hurts uh, but then it's not impossible the second thing is another possible way is attach your camera to a monopod keep it upside down through outside and use control your 
camera through a phone. These days it's easy. That's another approach, but everything should be a slow, steady moves. Is there anything more, Hermi? Uh, yes. One curious question. Why did you convert from Nikon to Canon? <laughs> I mean, see, to be honest, Nikon, Canon, or Sony, all the brands are good. Um, the main reason was all my friends were using uh, uh, Nikon. And with Nikon, I like the colors. It's not that Canon colors are bad. Everything is good. When you are moving with a circle and everybody is using the same, just playing around. And uh, uh, what the main difference I see in Nikon and Canon is definitely the colors. And uh, first of it is more or less same. Use Nikon or Canon. Everything is good. And uh, midfield UA asked, do you often change the lens? Uh, I carry two lens, two to three lens. It's usually at the prime lens, either 400 mm, 600 mm, or a 180, 400 mm. If you ask me my favorite lens, it is 180, 400 mm, the new lens from Nikon. The main reason is it got a converter facility. And the question, sorry, back to the question, I carry two cameras at least preferably if there is an option i'll carry a third one too but definitely two i at use one with the prime long lens and uh, the second along second one along with the 7200 and if there is any possibility to carry a third one then i use it along with a wide angle if i'm carrying only two cameras then i shift to the wide angle depending on the situation okay the next question is at the beginning, you mentioned doing many workshops. Have you done any in Kenya for Kenyan photographers? If the lockdown, lockdown end, would you be able to do a few? I would love to do, um, you know, workshop for Kenyan photographers, but um, I have done workshops in Kenya, but not for Kenyan photographers. Usually we have uh, small groups coming from different parts of the world. We take them to Kenya on different locations around the world and teach them what we know in the field. So that's how it works. We do conduct workshops and we do conduct workshops in Masai Mara. That's like our second home. And once the lockdown ends, we already canceled two or three of our workshops so far this year. I'm just waiting to waiting for all the situation to slow down and uh, get better so that we can travel and be in the wild. That's it's such a great feel to be in the world and missing it so much. So uh, Vinod Kumar is asking, how can we test these silhouette pics when in Dubai? Any tips for us? Definitely, you can uh, try in in um, Al Qudra. Al Qudra is definitely a great place. You get birds there, and uh, you can also get uh, uh, guess uh, oryx there. So these two subjects and guesses. So these couple of subjects are always and al Qudra is definitely one beautiful spot where you can see a lot of birds with long feathers where you can see the magic and it's not difficult to spot the the birds are always there so go there practice a practice treat al Qudra as a practice ground that's the best you can do al Qudra, al -Qudra is the best place to practice this uh next question is when will you plan with post trails a trip to Mara for Kenyan photographers. It's asked by Pranav Chadda. Pranav, it's better you arrange one. I'm there. I'm in. Whenever you're ready, let me know I'm in. I think maybe after the lockdown. Right after. Let's uh, let's finish the lockdown. We have already a trip. Let's hope if things works well. I have a trip in Mara from um, November 27 till December 4th. So hopefully, and if things are better before that, maybe one before that too. So once things are slowed down, once things are okay, please let me know when when can I do one trip for Kenyan photographers. I will be more than happy and do anything with Mara in Kenya. Thank you, Pranav. Uh, next question is, hi, uh, can you tell how you are setting different Kelvin in different situations? 
it it is completely depending on the light so see as i mentioned kelvin is like a u early mornings and late evenings if you want a more warmer tone then use anything above 8000 uh, anything above 6000 in fact and if you want it more dramatic like the clouds and uh, if it is really reddish reddish you want it slightly more on the reddish like i use 8000 plus it, it it changes from people to people see if you check my images you can see it's more on the warmer tint if you check hermes images it's more on the uh, he like the cooler this bluish side of it so early mornings and late evenings we keep it high on the uh, kelvin value during day time like after 10 between before 3 o'clock it's like between 4800 to 5200 hermes always asked me to reduce the kelvin value and ask it more uh, uh, to cool it down cool it down slightly more but somehow i like the orange tint right hermes so with that same question uh, girish chokar is asking instead of changing kelvin in camera playing with the warmth of the color in post production in lightroom is advisable i somehow feel it's always good you know to do all the production <laughs> pre production rather than post production when you see an image we all do editing i'm not saying i don't do editing in my pictures but i always wanted to keep it in the minimal the only corrections we do is playing with the colors and slight adjustment of contrast no adding and removal business over here and and if you can when you have an option to do it in the right way with the right settings why you need to depending on the post post production it is possible but it's i feel this is the right way to do there is no right and wrong in anything in life this is my call it's always better that's what yeah. and yeah. that's what what we feel yeah and acha neta ji has asked ma'am do you do any post processing for your captures of i think course. the answer is same yeah yeah of definitely post processing makes your images more better yes. right yes it always enhance the picture uh last time we missed many questions from facebook so i have checked that as well okay. we have a question from vaisak anup there is a doubt do you trust on auto focus or to be on manual focus it depends on the situation um see if the subject is if it is a fast moving subject then i prefer to use auto focus like a situation like a hunting and things like that because you really need to keep track of it and uh, click uh, uh, using a manual focus is quite a task in situations like that but if the subject is static and you have enough time to play around then manual focus works there is no doubt what do you think you have a different opinion hermi when it comes to wildlife i always think it's a risky situation yes. to play with manual focus manual focus yeah yes. so i never take a chance <laughs> a missed moment is always missed a missed moment yeah but uh, when when when, the, when it is um when the light is really really low that is certain of yeah, that you can't you can't uh, trust on auto focus you have to be on manual focus and manual focus is precise it's more accurate as well yes yeah especially for the with the topic of rim light um, there are situ- many situations we switch yes. off the auto focus and use the manual focus so that it's more accurate yeah uh Nab- nabil jalil is asking could you please share some post processing tips see yeah um, the only thing i do is the the first window i mean i how i don't know how in can light i room. in in light room i change the um, uh, exposure uh, exposure contrast yeah, highlight and uh, i place lightly with the clarity a cl- a clarity and the curve so that you can yeah. access the light path the maximum 2 minutes work is what we usually do in an image that that is on the higher side if you don't want to make it artistic yes if you are going to make it artistic you can spend hours on a picture working on the details to get it to do a way you want to present that's completely acceptable it's all about 
how you see things or how you want to show your images it's your concept there is nobody who can question you're doing it wrong because it's your right there are fabulous artists uh, and uh, designers and the post production you know, you know, people who do post production in spectacular way and i love their pictures um vinod kumar is asking do you have any sessions to teach uh, this in al qudra so I we all i mean see uh, we used to do we used to do right now with covid um, we are, and the sum, it's summer in um, yeah it's almost dubai. 48 degree here yeah but <laughs> but hermi maybe you can think about restarting with less a number of people yeah but now the uh, restrictions are still there removed, so no it's okay. removed or taken out so okay. we can think about planning but it's like you have to go very early around 4:30 or 4 o'clock something like that i think we can always plan 4 o'clock and let's plan one and yeah. let's announce and let's see how it goes pranav chada says we definitely want you to plan and hold safari to mara with kenyan photographers we'll definitely think, do that um i mean we are in in fact yeah and vinod has one more question can you talk about a situation which went wrong and you missed a shot due to settings being wrong there is not one situation there are <laughs> many situations if the he photographers said that they haven't missed their shot believe me that's a lie <laughs> yeah. you know uh, uh, though do i say pa- it patience and um, uh, being content is very very important in in when you are in the wild but there are situations when you see certain moments you just forget the rest of the things sometimes you forget to forget even to click and certain times your brain doesn't work you are in that excitement and click and check later and uh, especially when when you are not giving attention to the light things can get bad yeah i have uh, experience like i was waiting for a leopard to come down and i pictured i framed everything a beautiful landscape everything is set i was waiting for almost 2 hours and when the the settings everything was ready when the leopard came down i bent down to take something <laughs> that moment it came down so there are a lot of hello yeah and that not last time when this lion was uh, drinking water we knew the lion is going to drink water i set the camera i took a couple of pictures and the set camera for video and i forgot to press the trigger <laughs> it was such a disaster i didn't get the images neither the video and i was like what the hell so uh, we have uh, a question from jay viknesh hariharan ma'am have you been to ic visitation doing photography with some subjects over there patients <laughs> uh you mean uh, over here yeah in canada i think, uh, I think in, it's his it uh, uh, in ic vegetation i not in canada but um, i've been to yellowstone uh, in jan for 10 days it was it was amazing it was my first te- first time experience uh, and the climate i mean i moved from uae with the weather like third at that time it was december so the weather was slightly on the cooler side 15 to 20 was the uh, temperature and when i reached in the us and directly to this particular place yellowstone the temperature in certain days were minus 27 minus 30 um and to be honest i was not even prepared with the proper boots neither warm clothes so i was like frozen most of the time but i love to be in the weather so i try to be as active as possible and try to adjust with layers of clothes i have some some good shots from um uh, yellowstone which i still have in the uh, started sharing i'm just thinking about doing a project with that that's the reason i'm not sharing it yet um some shots of uh, the bisons and 
has some habitat shots and some close shots of bisons, then moose and um, some of them, yes, and some landscapes. Let me see. Let me think about it. Of, I don't know what to do with it, but I'm trying to think something on it. Yeah. Chandra Prasad is asking in wildlife photography, which mode is preferable, aperture mode or manual? Um, I use in usual cases I use aperture. If not, then manual. Um, that's my my preference. Tell me, what do you think? What's your suggestion? Even I suggest aperture priority. But the see oh. the depth of field play a major role in uh, wildlife photography. So uh, that way, is, if, when it comes to manual mode, you need to and adjust everything. And at certain times, it's when things happen quite fast, it's very difficult. So and especially you can't uh, predict what is happening in the wild. So you have to be really quick. Yeah. And aperture mode helps you to control a lot of things. Like you just need to concentrate on your aperture okay. and the rest, the camera will take care. So if if it's late evening or if it's an even light, you can still try with manual mode. Uh, Midfield UAE is asking, are you based in Dubai or Canada? Um, I, in fact, I'm shuttling between <laughs> India, Canada and Dubai. And um, right now, I'm focusing more on the Canadian side. But I will be visiting Canada and India because my family Dubai and my India. friends. <laughs> Dubai and India. Dubai and India, yes. Oh, so, Solomon I, Rajkumar is asking, what is your take on third-party lens on Nikon body? Uh, do we get a result at par or what is the sacrifice we make? There, def there is definitely a sacrifice, I think. Uh, uh, it's like a Nikon with N Nikon or Canon with Canon always gives slightly better results. That's what my take. Um, I when I was when I have started, I was using uh, Nikon D80 body along with the Sigma 18200. Then we had a 5500, a 15500. Hear me right? Yeah. The second one, 15500. And then I think uh, the shift was to Canon and it was a uh, 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 D7, 70. 70 with a 7200 and a 600mm and a 1DX Mark one was the gears in the Canon set. But when all the friend circle changed to Nikon, and we also changed it to Nikon. And uh, right now, I use uh, Nikon. So basically, Nikon. you need to make a lot of sacrifice yes. when it comes to a third party. Yes. You will lose the clarity. Yeah. You need to sacrifice on the clarity. You won't get that crisp images most of the time. I, I haven't used anything. People are saying Tamron. Uh, and Sigma is doing good, uh, but mm -hmm. honestly, I haven't tested anything. But uh, so far, I understand Nikon with Nikon or Canon with Canon or Sony with Sony gives the best. It's always the best, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there, there is a lot of providers who take you for a safari in Mara, but rush to many sports. How can we select a good one? What should we look out for? Uh, for the guide, are, are you talking about the guide or a agency? I think service providers. Service providers. See if you are looking for a mentored photography trip. You need to look at their uh, history. Uh, that is one thing. But otherwise, if you are going by yourself, you need to give clear instruction uh, to the service provider about what you want. You want you need to tell them your focus is going to be on lions and you need early mornings and your so and you need to make sure the vehicle they are using. I mean, you need to give them a set of instruction in advance so and discuss these with them so that they will be able to tell you whether it is possible for them or not. And you need to make sure the guides whom you are choosing, the drivers we are going to choose in Mara are good because it's but is there a way to know that for a new new person who is who want to travel? How will he know about a good guide or a good driver? A good guide, I th I, I think there is a, a ranking for the guides in Mara, so they can check the details on that. Okay. 
Uh, we have one question about which are the places in Kenya for wildlife and the total cost. Somebody already answered that question. <laughs> okay. So Chintan Goyal said entry fees vary from forty to hundred dollars per day, and vehicle cost will be hundred and twenty USD. So he explained it actually. Yeah. Uh, how do you manage to take your equipment through airport safely? And have you taken them in cabin luggage anytime? Jay Vignesh Hariharan is asking. In fact, I only used to, I only take them in um, cabin baggage and, uh, and I use a very thin but a strong bag. Uh, the main reason is, you know, the equipment, there is a limit, the maximum what we can carry with us is 10 kgs. 8 to 10 kgs. 8 to 10 kgs. And uh, when it, if it is uh, Emirates, sometimes you have a very hard time when it goes beyond 8 kg. So we try to keep everything possible, the lightweight and the bag. Um, yeah. It's a very simple thin bag which we use uh, so that it can be, you can fit everything inside and still with, be within the uh, size, within, within the weight limit of 9 kg, sometimes 9.75 kg. Um, then uh, you, I carry a laptop along with me and hard disk all these things i try to keep maximum inside the bags and the main reason is you keeping one of our friend i think a couple of our friends lost um their equipments from the bags right not from mara but from south africa i believe mm. yeah yeah and we got one more question regarding that uh, 150 600 tamron g2 lens yeah. is it good for canon considering the lower budget i see uh, forget about see if you're if you're starting your journey i will say just go for it whatever fits <clears throat> just just go for it if you if you think that is what you can afford right now start with it keep your practice up and keep your savings and when it time when when the time comes get into uh, 100 yeah. 400 or anything in that range. Rabi, Rabi Nish asked, is megapixel matters? It does. See, when it comes to uh, C7, it got 40 plus or 45 megapixel or something. Um, when you are using such cameras, whether it is D850 or um, what, what is the other brand, Zermi, with 40 plus me megapixels in when it comes to different... Canon 5D Mark IV. Uh, Canon 5D Mark IV, Sony A7R4. A7R4. So these cameras, when we are using, in fact, somebody asked uh, if Raji asked, why don't you use the D850? Most pros are using it. Any reason? I somehow I'm very comfortable with um, D5 and the ISO performance. The main reason why I'm not using a D850 and I'm still in love with uh, D5. I still haven't got a chance to test D6 like Mr. Hermes. I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> but the reason behind that is the ISO performance and uh, frame rate. In the wild, frame rates play a major, a major role and the ISO performance. See, noise can be treated as, an, treated as an art. But if it is not as an art, then you, you have trouble. You only get record shots. In this case, I feel ISO performance, if you're comparing with a D8, D850 with D5 and the FPS, I like it, uh, D, I, I like it uh, D5. For this 5D, D5, everything is like confusing. D5, yes. I know Chadda is asking, have you been to Nairobi National Park, which is the only wildlife park within a city? Yes, I have been to Nairobi National Park a couple of times and it's beautiful. You, you guys are so lucky. You have a park right in the center of the city. Uh, Achha, Netaji is asking, is there any best moment that lions or cubs are very close and near to you? Please share the experience. Oh, there are many moments with cubs. I mean, I love cubs. I mean, I'm pretty bad with, uh, if you ask me to take care of a small human baby, I'll run away from the scene. But when it comes to cubs, 
I, I can sit down next to them and photographing day and night without a single complaint. I don't even need water, food, or anything. I'm that involved when it comes to cubs. The plus point or the good point is they are full of energy. They just jump around. You be silent. You need to be silent for a while and keep quiet. Um, be patient. Then you can see them coming closer to you. They can even come as close as you are. Even with you know you, your lens may not be able to focus it because they are beyond that minimum focal length. All you need to do is be quiet. Be quiet, be patient, don't make sounds other than the trigger sound. But with that trigger sound, they will get used to within within some time. So be patient and uh, just with lion, lion cups, the main problem is there will be always a bunch of lion cups. Want to focus, but anything <coughs> can give you some memorable moments. I think it's almost one hour. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. We, yeah, let's let's wind this up, and uh, so we would, on that note, we, we have a request that whoever is watching and whoever will be watching, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Postrails Explorers, and support us. Yes, this is the, our whole intention is to use our images to bring people more closer to nature. If we feel if at least see one one couple of sentences I would like to add. We got 100,000 or 200,000 plus cheetahs in the wild just 100 years ago. Right now, what we got is only 6,000 plus. That's the way it is decreasing. If these images can bring at least one person closer to nature, that makes a big step. That's a big difference. So that's the whole idea. Use our images to spread this love for nature, to bring people more closer to nature. I have one more thing to point. Next one is going to be by Hermes, and he is going to uh, explain his experience with orangutans from Borneo and Indonesia. So yes. stay tuned. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing the <laughs> uh, presentation for that. Oh, great. Okay, then see you all. Thank see you so you much. All. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.